All right, so I want to do a real quick tabletop video on the Gen 2 Savage Axis Mag Catch Upgrade Kits. So um, I kind of have uh, some of the parts from a Gen 1 kit here, and I want to talk about the differences and the design choices and stuff. If you're looking for an installation video, um, I would first refer you to the Gen 1 video because most of the installation stuff is going to carry over. Um, I've got a, I just got these done and I got to make this video and, and let some guys know. And I think this will survive for most people. If you want a comprehensive video, I got to produce that later. I'm heading out of town and i um, going to be traveling for a month or so. And so I'm just not going to have time to do that before I go. But um, most of the installation carries over. So um, I'll go over the, the differences in installation when we get that far. But the general idea of this, this whole concept of products was originally to just be able to basically uh, make your access like a, a regular Model 10 rifle and you could run the, the 10 round drop box mags uh, that they produce, especially for the short action. And then also um, if you have that or a long action or whatever, you could take your access mags and just trim the tab off the off the front of the mag, the plastic tab, and then we can use this, this metal tab that's uh, used to retain the other magazines and the other models. And so this was the, the Gen 1 part. And what I was trying to do like a Model 10 was just not break the line of the stock and the magazine with the, the length of the, the handle. And in retrospect, I don't know if necessarily know if that was that important to people. Um, but what that did is because this is a retrofit product and we have a limited length on this handle length and the pin is located so close to one end, we kind of have a limit to how much force we can, we can easily actuate. And that limited the spring force being used. Um, and that was uh, an issue, not with the short action cartridges, it seemed, but uh, with some of the long action cartridges. I actually sold a few of the Gen 1s for guys that had OTS 6s and things. And they had trouble with this thing turning loose of the magazine under recoil. And I had bought a 308 and I tried to use some heavy for car caliber loads in that cartridge and just didn't get that same problem. So, um, I, I assumed it would be good for the, the, the range of the, the cartridges this came in, but it, it had turned out not to be the case. So, um, and then the other issue was I just, I made a poor choice on this, on the spring diameter. This spring was designed originally or intended to be retained on this pin. And then the whole thing could be a slid in as an assembly. But the problem was this pin, uh, didn't do as good of a job retaining the spring as I'd hoped and then also uh, the spring in diameter was just too small and the spring size overall is too small so they would get lost or whatever in shipping they would come loose from this pin when they were installed oftentimes they wouldn't be perpendicular to the to the portion of the stock that they push up against so they wouldn't they'd be bent in there and that wouldn't apply enough force so there was a number of problems with that so on the gen 2 product I knew I needed to fix those issues the problem was we were uh, relocating from Oregon to Central Texas. Um, there was a whole host of reasons about that, moving our, our home and the business and the whole thing. And so I just didn't, uh, I, I had to back burner this thing. And so it took me a lot longer than I'd hoped. So I'm about a year behind of where I was hoping to get this thing done. But I finally got it, uh, you know, designed and prototyped and tested and produced and all that stuff. So we're ready to go now. So the main differences are going to be just in the length of this this latch handle, the swing latch handle, and then also the um, the spring. So you can see how much larger the spring in the Gen 2 compared to the spring in the Gen 1 is. It's, it's almost comical in, in difference. And so the uh, the the hardware is the same. And this this we had uh, great luck with this. We uh, I've been using it in this. I built this as a 280 Actly to test this issue and, and recreate the problems. And uh, using this setup in here, I, I didn't affect the accuracy detrimentally at all. I didn't have anybody complain on the Gen 1 product about their groups opening up, etc. So um, what I wanted to do was basically completely eliminate the problems I saw in the first one. And so going to a, a central, basically a pin that's located in the center of this lever, I defeat the the, the moment load that's created with the mass being uh, uh, biased to one end of this lever uh, completely. And so 
uh, also with a much longer spring or latch handle, we can actuate a, a much, much heavier spring. And that's, that's why we're seeing such a stark difference here. So retaining the magazine in this thing shouldn't be any kind of a problem at all. And then um, in terms of installation to catch back up there, uh, the, the, this, the Gen 1 installation is basically going to be the exact same as the Gen 2. You're going to modify the stock. You're going to push the spring clip on for the uh, to retain the rear of the, the mag on the uh, on the the short action models only the the long action model doesn't uh, doesn't have that difference the the difference is in the the long and the short action again you got to go to the videos this tab's trim so we got to do something to retain the model tens in the axis because otherwise that tab won't reach to the top of the ramp that's designed to 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 maintain that so instead of cutting the ramp short and then having your axis mag loose we push a spring clip on to retain it and um, you guys were really good about installation. I thought we were going to have more more trouble with that on the Gen 1 product. But between stock modification and installation of this kit in the uh, in the spring clip, uh, you know, all that went really, really well. You guys didn't have much in the way of problems. It was just a result of this this spring being too small in diameter. And that's that was really my issue and not yours. So um, and then on the uh, other models that that we can produce, I've got the Boyd's model parts and I'm uh, working through those to to get production done and that should be oh uh, with the, the month of travel it should be about two months away and then this uh, the, on the shorter latch version I actually don't have plans to produce that if I, I, I did prototype it I was able to overcome the issues with the spring force and use a larger diameter spring and correct the issues I saw in the gen 1 product but I'm not certain if there's enough demand to produce that. So I actually don't have to, I have not, uh, I don't have plans to produce that. So if you do want that as a product, please let me know. But otherwise, uh, my, my thinking is as a hunter, if you wanted, you know, to run short mags that don't stick out, then the only issue you have to deal with is this, this uh, mag catch sticking out a little bit. Um, which is more and more common on a lot of rifles, and then this should be actually easier to actuate um, with gloves and things a lot more easily. So um, if you do want that product, though, let me know, and I'll, I'll, I'll work through it. But at this point, I don't have plans to produce it. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to cover was in terms of selling this, uh, again, kudos to you guys. I didn't have anybody being abusive as you hear people say as as you know consumers with reviews or any of that stuff you know i had a, a few people that were kind of trying to work the system and the the liberal buyer protection policies through UA to maybe get some refunded or free product kind of thing but um the one thing that i did have was ebay's um ai was sometimes a little aggressive about uh, delisting this product because I think it's just because it's firearm related I'm assuming and so I would have guys that would kind of ping me and say hey I can't find an active listing are you are you selling these things still or what and so um, in an effort to deal with that um, what I'm going to do is put links in the descriptions so that you guys can either through the website or directly through the business email send me your PayPal email address and then um, I can just send you a PayPal invoice and we can do business that way. I, I, I was hoping to get a web store and all that stuff done. It's just not been a priority with all the other things going on. And uh, it's still pretty easy through PayPal and you guys don't have to do much. Um, and even if you just, you know, have PayPal linked to a uh, bank account, you can still have buyer protection through PayPal. So um, I like having that. It makes me feel better. So even though I've got good marks on eBay, I think it's always good to have um, some sort of redundant stuff that protects you from, you know, I've, I've dealt with companies online, I've bought stuff from and been a little concerned about it. So anyway, um, if you guys have questions or comments, let me know and uh, we'll get these out to you. Either I'll take them with me and I'll be able to ship them from the road or I'll make sure somebody in Texas can, can ship them out when I leave. So thanks guys. Bye.